Hello fellow astronomers, Jonathan here. I'm back at the Besser Museum Planetarium today to talk to you about some more cool astronomy stuff. Today we're going to be looking at the Small Magellanic Cloud and the Large Magellanic Cloud, two deep sky objects only properly visible in the Southern Hemisphere. The only place in the United States I could think of where we could see both these clouds together was in the America Samoan Islands in the West Pacific Ocean. So I set the dome to be viewed from there, that way we could observe the clouds together as they would appear to a casual observer. Now if you're close to a city, you're not going to be able to see these clouds with the naked eye because they're so dim. So in order to get a better view of what these clouds look like, let's change our perspective from here on the American Samoas to 160,000 light years outside the Milky Way. A little bit outside our galaxy, we can see both these clouds in their full beauty. We can see the small Magellanic Cloud over here on the left, the Milky Way in the center, and the large Magellanic Cloud on the right. Now these clouds are actually dwarf irregular galaxies. Dwarf just means that they're relatively small for a galaxy, at least in comparison to the Milky Way. For instance, the large Magellanic Cloud is only about 14% the size of the Milky Way, and about 1% of its mass, with the small cloud being smaller and less massive. Now, the irregular part comes from their shape. They don't have the standard spiral shape that we associate with the Milky Way, but they're instead kind of torn and jumbled about, more of a conglomeration of stars and gas and no particular pattern. And this comes from the gravitational pull, not only from the clouds themselves tugging on each other, but also from our Milky Way, which is thought to be the main object that these two dwarf galaxies orbit. The main theory that I've read is that these dwarf galaxies are slowly orbiting the Milky Way, very, very slowly falling into the galaxy. Eventually, thoughts are that they'll become a part of the Milky Way in about five, maybe six billion years from now. However, it can be hard to study objects of this magnitude and for such long periods of time. So other theories suggest that maybe these clouds are going a little bit too fast to be captured by the Milky Way and will instead zoom right past our galaxy and off into the depths of intergalactic space. That's all I have for the two dwarf galaxies for now. So let's head back home to Earth and I'll send you off from there. Alright everybody, that is going to be it for today. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, keep your eyes on the sky.